Once upon a time, there was a tiny kingdom called Cornucopia. As rich in its happiness as it was in gold, and famous for its food, the delicate cream cheese of Kurdsburg, to the hopes of heaven pastries of Shoesville. Each was so delicious that people wept with joy as they ate them. But even in this happy kingdom, a monster lurks. Legend tells of a fearsome creature living far to the north in the marshlands, the Ichabod. Some say it breathes fire, spits poison, and roars through the mist as it carries off wayward sheep and children alike. Some say it's just a myth, and when that myth takes on a life of its own, casting a shadow over the kingdom, two children, best friends, Bert and Daisy, embark on a great adventure to untangle the truth and find out where the real monster lies, bringing hope and happiness to Cornucopia once more. The Ichabod. Written by J.K. Rowling. Read by Stephen Fry. Hello. So in my past video, I mentioned that many big YouTubers that review books often review the same old names, J.K. Rowling being one of them. Now in that video, I said that I do not disagree with reviewing big named authors. When a new author comes out with a brand new book, yes, I believe a reviewer should, if they are interested in it, pick that book up, read it, and then review it. I am interested in J.K. Rowling. She, along with Stephen King, being one of my favorite authors. I am a huge fan of the Harry Potter franchise. I have listened to the Harry Potter audiobooks many times over. I'm not going to probably go back and review each individual book on this channel. I am thinking about possibly, maybe, doing a ranking of the books in general. And then, I might also do a ranking of the movies as well. But today I want to review her newest book, The Ichabog. So let's start where I normally begin with the cover. So, how likely am I to buy this title based off the cover? Now, the cover had a classic kind of look. It looked like your classic fairy tale story. Which, I'm actually a big fan of this cover due to the fact, once you read the story, a lot of the things on the cover, the little tiny extras, really do seem to make sense. Unfortunately, I will say this is kind of the plainest cover you could have. And I really don't see another way she could have done this. So, I mean, it was good. I don't know if it could be improved upon. And something about the little designs on the cover just really seem cartoony. I mean, I get what it's going for, but it does seem just a slight bit cartoony. If this is ever turned into a movie, I really do think that it should be a cartoon and not live action. I don't think this... I think this story is good enough for a live action. But I think it would be do better as a cartoon. But moving on to the title. The Ichabog. It's okay. It's perfect for the story that it's telling. Since... You know, the Ichabog is something that's constantly repeated through the story. However, the only problem I really have with this title 
and whether it matches the story or not is I don't know why it makes me think of Ichabod from Sleepy Hollow I again I don't maybe it's just because the Ica part Ichabod Ichabog you know they're very close sounding so I th think that hurts it as far as the title goes so that's my thoughts on the title now for the story and this is a pretty big one okay so first off you might not think that this story being a standalone looking book written by an author whose last series took seven books to finish the book i'm basically telling you right now it is long it is very long at 64 chapters. However, I feel like the chapters are, were pretty short sometimes. Now, I can't tell you this because I did not read it. I was listening to the audiobook of this. But just based on what I heard, it was very much... It seemed like the chapters were very short compared to the chapters she wrote for Harry Potter. Which I don't have a problem with. I myself, in my own book series, I do short chapters too. The reason why is because people are very busy nowadays. And they don't have time to sit down and read long chapters. Unless they're heavily invested in the book. So by having short chapters, you can actually make that better for your audience. Because they can read one chapter in five or ten minutes and feel like they've accomplished something reading let's say one chapter a day so this book might take somebody two months to complete because the chapters are short and they'll feel like they're making progress you know for a parent reading this to a child you know that makes the short chapters good the story though um hearing every name well, I get into that when I get to characters and stuff. Story-wise, it took a very different approach than I was expecting. Um, the synopsis I just read here at the beginning, it kind of sounded like a different book. And it was a little bit confusing until I started to understand kind of, you know, what the story was really about. Yes, it's about a kingdom. Yes, it's about a creature called the Ichabog. Some people believe it's a myth. Some people believe it's real. Eventually, the king decides to go out and look for it. And we spend a lot more time with the king and the king's men than we actually do with the two children. Yes, the two children keep getting brought up, but they don't really become heavy into the plot until, like, I think, like, chapter 30 or 40. So, being at 64 chapters, they're only in, like, half the book. There's even uh, several chapters where, eventually, the king disappears. They keep saying they're doing this for the king, or the king, the king, but we don't actually have any context of what the king is doing during this whole time. And there is kind of a seven-year jump point at one part of the book. I feel like this could have been split up into two books. And it might have served a little bit better. I don't know. I really don't. But other than that, I mean, the story is pretty good. It's pretty engaging. It kept me wanting to know what was going to happen to the villain. And yes, this story, like most, has a villain. Has an actual villain. I won't say who it is because I don't want to spoil this book. If you really want to check it out, I would suggest go check it out. Moving on to narration, I would say the narration was perfect. It was narrated by Stephen Fry, who redid all the Harry Potter books and is a pretty well-known actor. And I think he's just going to be doing all of J.K. Rowling's books from now on, probably. I mean, I don't know how much she's done besides Harry Potter. And now this, so I know she's written the scripts for the Fantastic Beast movies, but that was perfect. The characters, um, again, most of the characters seemed not really recycled characters from the Harry Potter series. Although there were a few that I felt she just changed the names but kept the same characters in. Um, there's this one fat... 
friend of the king, who's a lord, who seemed to be kind of like Uncle Vernon, but the other one, the other lord who was friends with the king, he seemed more like Jafar from Aladdin. So, one was from Harry Potter, one was from Aladdin. And then, of course, you have, you know, the children who basically... I don't know, I'm starting to see a thing where it seems like J.K. Rowling really likes two boys and a girl. I mean, in this one, you got a fourth girl, kind of... But it turns out that she's not as well connected except for the other three have known each other kind of their whole lives. So there's a long relationship between these three kids. And the third's just kind of there. He's the Ron of the group. There's definitely a Hermione and there's definitely a Harry. Um... Daisy and Bert. Bert is clearly similar to the Harry Potter character. Now, there's no magic in this book, which is a good thing. I'm glad they didn't bring in magic. It was fine. Um, some of the names, though. That is where I had a little bit of a problem, where I'm like, I'm hearing the names, but looking at them through, like, the chapter list... Or seeing it in the, you know, synopsis of the book. I'm so glad I listened to the audiobook because I would have probably butchered the sounds of those names. So, yeah. I think, may, hopefully, the book has some kind of a pronunciation guide at the end. I'm not seeing anything. So, at least if you get the audiobook, you don't have to worry about the pronunciation. The ending. Now we're moving into the extras. The ending was a little bit predictable once you figure out where the story's going. The audio level, I'm not even going to bother with the audio level because this was professionally done. I mean, this was up and ready to go the day the book launched, so... And the dialogue. It just, like I said, it it's by the same writer, so it felt like similar dialogue to Harry Potter. There isn't much of a difference. Maybe that's because I listened to it and I didn't add in my own flair or thoughts as I was reading it. But hearing, you know, him read it, you know, it was fine. The dialogue was exactly like in Harry Potter. When characters talk in Harry Potter, you could throw the same character's faces on here. But one problem I did have, which I should have brought up when I mentioned characters, is the descriptions. I did have a problem with how things were described. Because in the beginning of the book, it's described that Cornucopia is this small little kingdom. And I'm thinking, okay, it's small. But then she starts talking about the king. And I swear, I'm, I mean, I'm probably gonna have to re-listen to it to be sure. But it sounded like she said the king had four arms or something, five mustaches. I'm thinking, what kind of a weird kingdom are we in? Is this even a human kingdom? But later down the road, you discover yes, this is a human kingdom. So I was like, okay, so maybe she, I misheard something about four arms. But throughout the book, they do mention his multiple mustaches. And I'm thinking, how in the world does a man have five mustaches on his face? So, I mean, maybe that's just, you know, exaggerated. I just think some of the character, you know, descriptions could have been better. It could have been better described. So instead of dialogue, I guess I'm really here messing with the descriptions. How well were things described? And I think it could have been a little bit better. I mean, for the most part, it was fine. Most characters were described fine. My big problem was with the king at the beginning. Again, you really don't know about a king from the description that Amazon gives you. Will I re-listen to it? Yeah, probably. If I'm bored and I run out of things and I'm done re-listening to Harry Potter, but I still want to stick with something by J.K. Rowling. 
I'll probably listen to it then. So, overall, what score would I give the Ichabod? I'm going to have to say a 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10 for the Ichabod. Because it did have a good story, the narration was perfectly fine, the characters for the most part were fine, the ending was a little predictable, the descriptions and dialogues were... I mean, the dialogue was basically the same from Harry Potter, the descriptions could have used a little bit of work, and I don't know, the cover, it's good, but it's just, like I said, it seems cartoony. And it seems like this is a children's book, but it's way too long for a children's book. I mean, no child is going to pick this to do any kind of school report. But if she had split it at, like, chapter 32... And then the next one picked up with chapter 33. I think that would have been better. But again, the short chapters do help. So, again. Yeah, I'm going to stick with an 8 out of 10. Now, as I mentioned before... If you want to check out the Ichabod for yourself and formulate your own opinion, it's available on Amazon, Audible, probably any bookstore because she is traditionally published and she's a well-known author. I doubt you'll have any trouble finding this book at any store. So if you are interested in this kind of story, and you're a fan of J.K. Rowling, even if you're not a fan, if you're not sure about reading her work, I mean, definitely check it out. It definitely is a good story. I kind of got a hint that there might have been some political agenda, maybe. This is a very big politics-based storyline so that again I don't think it's going to really land with children I think it'll be more for teens and adults but I don't see a teenager picking this up because the cover looks too cartoony if you enjoyed this review please check out my other reviews on this channel or if you want a really good epic modern day fantasy check out my book series the guardian of light also available on amazon if you are a self-published author and you are looking to get a book of yours reviewed i am reviewing audiobooks i might just start making this a normal thing so keep that in mind I cannot promise I will never bring up J.K. Rowling in a future review. Like I said, maybe next year I'll do a review of the entire Harry Potter series as a whole. And then I'll compare those to... I'll rank those and I'll rank the movies in a side-by-side -side comparison but after I do that I'm basically done with JK Rowling until she releases a new book I ain't gonna keep bringing her up and I'm not gonna go back and review every book I've ever read cuz that would take forever and I would much rather spend my time reviewing either new works by people that I like to read or New works by self-published authors who need a little support here on YouTube. So, like I said, if you are an author and you're looking for someone to review your work, I'm willing to review audiobooks. Let's get in touch and I'll set something up with you so we can start getting and we can get a review up on this channel of your work. I want to thank you all for watching. 
every time I hit 10 subscribers, I'm giving away another free code in my next video. So, subscribe today, ring the bell, and keep a watch out for new videos to pop up. I want to thank everybody for watching. Happy writing, happy reading, but most importantly, happy holidays. From my family to yours, Merry Christmas, everyone.